All right, everyone out there in internet land, um, my name is Shad and I'm building a commercial recording studio. And we've been at this for a while and I've been talking to a lot of different people and trying to get some ideas about what to do for the glue that goes in between your layers of drywall. And of course, everybody likes green glue. That seems to be the popular go-to item. Um, but I, the cost was almost just as much as the drywall. I couldn't really justify spending as much money on glue as what I was spending on the drywall. So I decided to shop around for some cheaper alternatives. Now, um, I got a recommendation from another really well-known studio designer on a substitute, but that kind of set me on a path looking for other substitutes. So what I did was I bought a case of about everything I could get my hands on and whether or not, um, well, some stuff was just available at you know Home Depot or Lowe's and some stuff I had to special order. But I wanted to show some of, some of you that have asked me questions about what I found out uh, well, basically what I found out. And so here we go. Um, one of the things that we found out was that there's a lot of BS out there, and but there's also a lot of truth. Sorting through that is always a huge pain in the butt. And I'm kind of panning around here because I have a little bit of a, almost a presentation I want to go through so that people can see what our very, very shoddy test method was. And the test method um, was just kind of the same for everything. We just kind of was like, well, well, that didn't work or this worked. And let's try this and compare it to that. So um, before we you know, got ready to spend four to six thousand dollars on glue, it was like, well, let's spend a couple hundred bucks and see what we find out. So here's with here's what we found out. So first of all, um, there's a lot of different things out there. I heard people talking about liquid nails. I heard people talking about uh, the green glue, quiet glue pro, acoustic sealants, even liquid nails. So here's what we did. Um, back in, when was it? 12, nine of 15. So um, that actually would be wrong because this is not a year old. It would have been probably uh, 14. So here's what we've got on this really, really messy looking plate. We have green glue, we have Quiet Glue Pro right here, and we have um, some Roberts Carpet Glue, and then we have Tremco Sealant, the black stuff right here, um, and then we have a, another acoustical caulk, and we have liquid nails. Okay, I can say right off the bat, liquid nails, while being probably the cheapest, is the worst. So, to the guy that suggested to me to use just use liquid nails, I don't think so. Okay, so, having talked with several different studio designers and had people say, well, nothing does what green glue does, I was like, okay, well, let's find out, um, asking from some other designers who are also in competition with each other, um, what they thought. So, kind of the consensus came back that green glue was the best, but there was other things that do the exact same thing, and I'm saying that making quotes in the air. Um, but I don't know that that's necessarily true. Now, I should also state that I am not affiliated with any company whatsoever other than my own. Um, I'm just a guy building a studio that wanted to get some answers and didn't like all the conflicting information I was getting, so I decided to do my own little test. So here's what we got. The green glue, all this stuff was set up um, on 12.9 of last year, that should be 14, I don't know why it says 15, um, but the green glue has been sitting here for quite a while, and you can see it's almost kind of like that slime stuff that was real popular with kids in the 80s. Um, it's still really pliable, it's been sitting out here in the open, this is now April 16th or 17th, so it's been sitting here for four months, and uh, that's pretty amazing stuff. Now, the next stuff here, which is the Quiet Glue Pro has only been sitting here for a few weeks, maybe three weeks max. And you can see it still does have kind of the same thing, but it's a little bit runnier and it's still pretty sticky, whereas the green glue wasn't quite as sticky. Also, I, before people start slamming me for saying my test method sucks, I know my test method sucks, but here's what we did. 
we tried to match the size of the bead when we laid a bead down. Like this is the green glue here and that's basically how it looked when we put it up. And this is the quiet glue that we put up to be the same bead size as the green glue and it ran like this. Now I've been hearing stuff online about green glue, or excuse me, the uh, quiet glue pro running and seeping out under walls and I thought, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal once everything's mudded and taped. Um, you should be able to kind of get around that and, you know, eventually it'll stop. So I thought, well, for saving, you know, almost $2,000 off of our order, this is what we ended up going with, which we placed a big order for the, for the Quiet Blue Pro, just mostly only for the savings. I will say that um, as far as ease of use, the green glue and the Quiet Glue were equal to work with. They came in the same size tubes, you have the same type of nozzle, uh, it goes on almost identically the same. Um, so there, anyway, there, there's, there's that. Um, this stuff here is this carpet glue that I was turned on to. Now, this has been on here for months now, and you can see how it's still pliable, which I thought was pretty darn slick. And when you're talking just cost, like the green glue is $190 to $220 per case, depending on where you can get it from. The Quiet Glue Pro, I found about $119 to $130 a case, but the carpet glue I found at about 40 bucks for four gallons, which was quite a big savings. Now, the other thing that we did was this, uh, this Tremco sealant um, became highly recommended for doing the seams between like where the walls come together. So that's what we ended up using, and I think this stuff is absolutely fantastic. And it seems to still hold um, its elasticity a lot like the green glue does. Maybe a bit firmer, but still very similar. So when I started testing, I thought, well, we'll throw that in there too, just even though it's not intended to go between layers of drywall, um, it's more of like a corner caulk. Um, I thought the stuff was pretty cool, and it was cheap. I think it was like $6 a tube or something like that, compared to the green glue, which runs around $18 a tube, depending on where you get it. Um, the Quiet Glue Pro, I think I got it for around, I want to say $12 a tube. Um, the other thing that we looked at here was this acoustical caulk. This is a paintable caulk, um, not really intended for going between layers of drywall, but I thought, you know what, it's paintable, um, it's a caulk, and it's cheap, so we'll just throw that on there too. And I think that was the OSI uh, sound caulk, is the white stuff here, that's what that is. And then up here is the liquid nails, and liquid nails, as you can tell, well, it's liquid nails. It's rock solid, so let's please, discount liquid nails. Now, at the last minute, uh, my builder says, well, hey, let's look at this tile glue and see if we can throw that into our test too. So that's what we did. And the tile glue we ended up trying out was this uh, Roberts Vinyl Composition adhe Tile Adhesive. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. Well, so let's look into that. And so we put some of that on this board here just to see how it looked and how it dried out. Now this has been on here for about two months, roughly, and it's still really pliable. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So let's slap down some green glue right next to it and see how that stacks up. And it's quite a bit firmer than the green glue, but the green glue, seriously, is something else. It really is. But when you're looking at the amount of cost, I think I paid about $4 for the small tub of this stuff here, just for a test, and quite a bit more for the green glue, obviously. So, um, what, one of the things that we did find out was that um, some work better as adhesives than others, obviously. The green glue doesn't work that great as an adhesive. You can still pry boards apart. We did a couple of tests with that. The quiet glue was somewhat the same. Um, the carpet glue was quite a bit firmer and tougher to tear apart, and the seal was, the caulk, um, the acoustical sealant was um, really quite simple to tear apart, it wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, liquid nails, of course, was liquid nails, um, and the caulk was the caulk. Um, the, the white acoustical paintable caulk was eh, mediocre, but not that that matters much. Uh, the other thing that we were kind of looking at was how did things sound uh, when we ended up uh, putting a couple of pieces together and it was really hard to do a test nothing's very scientific actually let's say nothing scientific at all 
Um, but it was just kind of interesting to see how things shaped out. So, um, oh, getting back to the whole running, let's look at this. This was a board we did a test on. This was back on March 4th of this year. And we put down two equal stripes of green blue with right next to the Quiet Blue Pro, just to see how it ran. And you can see, we were surprised at where it ran to. This is where we started with both of them. You can see that the green blue didn't really go anywhere. But the Quiet Blue ran a lot. And in fact, it's still running. And we actually ended up finding several spots in the walls, over here by the ISO booth, where it just starts seeping out. And then down here by the floor, it starts seeping out. And I'm like, well, I guess when you save money, that's the kind of the risk you run. I will say this, as far as ease of use, easy, the easiest stuff to work with, the green glue and the quiet glue go on the same. I mean, you can't even tell the difference if you're squirting one out over the other, out of the tubes. Um, probably the next would be the carpet glue, which is pretty amazing stuff. I thought, you know, the designer that I talked to that made the recommendation for the carpet glue is a really well-known guy. And I told him, look, I'm not gonna tell anybody who you are. I'm not gonna tell anybody that you recommended this. And I'm just gonna say, well, that's gonna be my backup then if, um, if I run out of money for glue, which I kind of ended up doing and I needed to finish my building. So we bought a whole bunch of the glue. <laughs> And guess what? It actually works seemingly just fine. Um, so anyway, here you go. Again, we got some green glue, a couple of sheets put together. We got carpet glue. This is the Roberts carpet adhesive, the 3095. Liquid nails, which is, yeah, let's forget that. And the Trimco acoustical sealant. So I'm gonna knock on each of these with a hammer and probably aren't really gonna be able to hear any difference in here with just doing it with a cell phone, <laughs> but we can try it anyway. And I'm trying to do this and I don't have any extra hands, so bear with me. That's the green glue. Here's the carpet adhesive. A little bit different sound. Here's the liquid nails. Yeah, forget about it. And then here's the Tremco acoustical sealant, which I thought when we hung these, these panels up, actually did a pretty good job. Um, but it's really hard to get out of the tubes compared to the green glue. So the green glue and the Quiet Blue Pro goes out much, much easier. Now, what is my conclusion from all of this? Here's my conclusion. Green glue, yep, it's expensive. But guess what? It is, from my experience here in my studio, is the best. I wish I'd have bought a whole bunch more of it. Um, but like I said, I was just, you know, like a lot of folks trying to save some dollars. Um, and I think that the Quiet Blue Pro is really going to be pretty good. The thing I liked about the Quiet Group Blue Pro was I was able to get a hold of the manufacturer and talk to them. And they gave me a lot of documentation that said the Quiet Glue performed as well, if not better, than the Green Glue. And they could not re rep uh, reproduce Green Glue's claims in the lab. And I thought that was pretty interesting, so I thought, you know what, for the amount of savings I'm going to get, it sounds like it's pretty close or close enough, so we went with the Quiet Blue. However, I probably really would have rather gone with all Green Glue. We did one whole room with the Green Glue, and we have no seeping through the walls like we have here. Um, second, surprisingly, is this Robert's Carpet Adhesive. This stuff is absolutely fascinating to me because it never really sets up. It stays gummy. And let's see if I can get it to string out here. It behaves, if you don't make it too thick, a lot like the carpet glue does. And what we did was we put it down with the carpet glue trowel that has um, kind of some uh, razoring along the edge. And so you end up getting these ridges. And we ended up using quite a bit of the carpet glue and I was really quite surprised when we had a band playing next door um, that there wasn't, there didn't seem to be a big difference um, in sound drop between the green glue wall, the quiet glue pro wall, I wish I had a tube of quiet glue pro left, but I don't, 
and the carpet glue um, wall. And so when we ran out of, we ran, burned through the whole case of green glue, and then we burned through, I don't know, 18 cases, I think, of the, um, of the Quiet Glue Pro, and when all that was gone, we just switched over to the uh, carpet glue for the rooms that didn't really matter, and I was really quite impressed. So, my conclusion is this. Green glue, yeah, it's expensive, but it is the best. Um, it's really easy to work with once you kind of get a system sorted out. Um, it, it doesn't run, it doesn't seem. Um, it just really, I mean, it, it stays pliable. I just, I think it's absolutely the best product. I think it's, its reputation with the top studio designers is well earned. Um, I think the Carpet Glue Pro, oh, excuse me, the uh, Quiet Glue Pro is a very, very close second. Although it does have a couple of drawbacks, but I think you kind of, uh, you're paying for <laughs> those drawbacks a little bit by um, getting it at a lower price, much lower price than the green glue. Um, it was just as easy to work with. It was probably almost 15 to 20% cheaper than the green glue. Um, but then surprisingly, out of all of them, the Roberts carpet adhesive uh, was just really, Wow, I was like really blown away. Here, I'll see if I can find I got this part we didn't cut off yet. Here, I'll show you. That's kind of amazing. If we can see the ridges on it and see how that works, because we didn't cut this door out yet. But check this out. I don't know if you can see that and how it dries. But it's absolutely fantastic. It's got all these little ridges in it and goes well between the sheets of drywall. So, in conclusion, I don't know how to conclude this thing. Get what you can afford. I think if you can't afford the green glue, green glue, you should buy it. I think it's absolutely the best product. If you can't afford the green glue, try the Quiet Glue Pro. And if you really want to save some money, Robert's Carpet Adhesive was, re was actually recommended to me by a top studio designer. And so we've gone through... Um, I think about six or eight gallons of that at this point, and we're done. So, um, yeah, we did the most important rooms with the green glue and with the Quiet Glue Pro, and then the rooms that didn't really matter quite so much, like the lounge and whatnot, we did with the uh, carpet adhesive. So, there you go. One other thing that I forgot to add a little bit ago was that when we were doing the tests with the green glue and the Quiet Glue Pro, um, we were spreading the glue as evenly as we possibly could. And green glue recommends two tubes per eight by four sheet. So we were doing the exact same thing with the Quiet Glue Pro. Um, they pretty much had the same recommendation. So um, we pretty much tried to make sure that we were as even as possible. And so it was a little bit surprising when, after doing our usual two tubes per sheet, that we ended up getting places that were running with the quiet glue. Whereas we didn't get any of that, this is also here a leak with the quiet glue. And we tried to be as, as um, even as we could with all of the distribution of the glue onto the sheets. And it didn't really seem to matter what we did because the quiet glue just seems to want to seep out even if you, you think you've got it as even as you can get it in comparison with the green glue. Now, this other room we had done with the green glue, which is in here, you can't really see too much, but we didn't get any seepage whatsoever. None from the ceiling, none from the walls. There's some more screwing off needs to be done in here, but nothing seeped anywhere. And this was done with the green glue in this room. So, um, yeah, I think that the Quiet Glue is a really a very good product. Um, I think the Roberts Carpet Glue, like we had on the back of this door here, is really cool for $40 for four gallons. But seriously, the Green Glue, it has a reputation for a reason, everybody. Because this is the uh, Quiet Glue Pro running, running running and 
running. But it still seems to work really good. I would have probably have rather spent the money on the green glue. But I had a lot of savings just by going with the Quiet Glue Pro. But the carpet glue is kind of my favorite. And that $40 for a four gallon pail, like one of those pails right there, is pretty tough to beat. Um, anyway, I hope this video helps. And if you like the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up or link to it or share it with your friends. Um, if you don't like the video, I don't really care. 